Hello, this is Excel Video 96. I'm Nate Moore. We're going to start where we left off last time. I've done a couple of things to kind of play with it a little bit. After I was blogging about this video, I said, you know, it'd be really cool if we made the background colors here the same as these chart uh, legend colors here. Because if we do that, then what I can do is I can come over here to layout legend and I can turn the legend off. Because I now, if I've got this, I can tell that blue is Dr. A and this red color is Dr. B. And if I add purple, that's Dr. D. And take red away, that was Dr. B. Because my little checkbox thing has the colors I want, it's pretty easy for me to tell what I'm dealing with. And I can hide that legend. And the other thing that's weird, let me put the legend back just for a second. Notice that even though B and C aren't in, they're not selected, they're not in my graph, I've still got B and C showing up here, and it's kind of screwy to have them show up in the legend. So get rid of it. It makes it look better. We're done. The thing I want to show you today is how checking a box and unchecking a box can actually change the graph in the first place. What I have down here is a whole bunch of names, and I want to show you what those are. So maybe what we could do is we drag right here, maybe put that there and then what we can do is we can scroll up here and over this way and now let's drag this down just a little bit there we yeah, a little bit more i want to see 99215 perfect now you can see the names that i've got set up here the code is simply 992112345 and that's in a4 to 8 and if you look at b4 to 8 that's that i've defined as dr a c 4 to 8, I've defined as Dr. B. Don't let this on-off thing bother you. It's just the name of my tab here. And C is defined as D4 to 8, all the way E, the specialty, is F. Now, this is the first trick. You see this range here, this is G4 to G8. I've defined that as blank. And I'll show you why in just a minute. The next set of things I define, if we scroll through here, are Show A, show B, show C, show D, show D, and show specialty. And all those are, are looking at those flags that we were playing with earlier. Remember when I click this, watch what happens to true when I click Dr. A. That goes to false. And so show A, show B, show C are just focused on this range here, B2, C2, D2, just like I have them here. So I'm, I've named all these ranges, even blank, and I've named show A, show B, show C, show D, and show specialty. Then the only other piece to the puzzle is I've named five series. And let's focus on what this uh, formula does. Maybe we can look at it up here, and that'll be the easiest place to see it. Um, don't let the, uh, the, uh, the single quote thing bother you. I'm just doing that so you can see the formula. So I've got an if statement. If show A is tr and and by putting if show A, that essentially means if show A is true, and right now it's false. Let's make it true. If show A is true, then do, then do Dr. A. And remember, all Dr. A is is B48. So I'm saying is if this is true, use the one below it. Or if this is true, use this one. Or if this is true, use that one. That is all these series things are saying. Now let's come back. If it's not true, if it's false, then do blank. So all I'm saying is, if this is true, here's your range. If it's false, here's your range. And you can see in this chart here, I've got A, C, D, and specialty right now are all charting this same G4 to G8, which is essentially just blank cells, and that's how I leave them off the chart. Then, as you'll come to expect by now, the very last trick, let's pull this out of the way. Now that I have those series defined, is to come over here, and let's move over to the chart so you can see it. When I do Dr. D, and when I add it, then the only trick to the game now is to define the data so that if you look at Dr. A and you edit it, the series name is right there, Dr. A, and guess what the series values are? Series A. And uh, Dr. D, series values, is series D. So all I'm doing is defining where the data is coming from, and then show A, show B, show C is just that true and false thing that the checkbox is turning off. And then I've got a little formula that says, if the checkbox is true, use Dr. A's range, B4 to B8. If not, go G4 to G8 and don't show anything. And every time the chart's updated, it looks at these five series, 
looks at these five checkbox results and looks for true or false and then decides how to do the graph. That's how to make this chart work for you. Sounds kind of involved. You may need to watch through it one more time, but once you've got the name set up and uh, the checkbox is set up, you can do all kinds of things and make it really easy to, to give users a very simple interface to decide what they want to see on a chart. Hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.